This is Grandson of Right Thought. Welcome to the School of Marvelous Light of the Flock. I don't have no internet right now, so I'm just recording this message in faith, and hopefully soon it will reach you guys, because it was something that I received from the Father, and I thought it was beautiful. So as y'all know, everything the Father shares with me, I'll share with you. To the pure, all things are pure. <clears throat> and as the scripture say, says, all things are good. And when Abba did his creating, he called what he created good. If it was good in his sight, that's what he called it. And you'll see it in Genesis if you read it. He saw that it was good. The creator created all, all things for good. It's man who twists and perverts the things that Allah has created, which is everything that you see. I know men have tried to convince you that they've come up with something or done something or created something, but he's just using the things that already exist. And the things that exist were made by he who exists. And these things are pure. And one of those things is marriage and consummation in other words making love so i need you as the little flock to open up your pure ears today with a pure heart because the pure heart it shall see the father they'll understand why he created everything that he did including sex and marriage and union <clears throat> why did he make it the way that he did because it's about a penetrator and a receiver. It's a mystery. Marriage is a mystery. That man penetrating that woman is a mystery concerning Christ and the church. That the two may become one flesh. And when you read about marriage, it says that the two come together. And the man leaves his father and his mother and he cleaves to his wife and they too become one new flesh, one flesh, one new man, one new, crea new, one new creation. You see, no longer two, but one. And that's a mystery concerning Christ and his church. His church is his bride. <clears throat> so a member, any member of his church would be a member of his bride so he comes to that bride and he penetrates her and she receives his seed and they become one flesh no longer two but one so what does this really mean this mystery it's about the words Whoever may be listening to this message, sometimes you may just be sitting and you may be like, man, I just want to hear a good word from the grandson of right thought. I might can get a word, but I need to hear it from the grandson of right thought. I just want to get a word from him. Well, that's your ear. It's, it's needing to be penetrated by a word. You see? And just like making love, sometimes you could say it's good sex, and other times it's bad sex. It doesn't pleasure you, or it doesn't go together right, or whatever words you guys want to call it. And so, it doesn't become one flesh. But when the penetration is pleasurable to the receiver, then it creates one new person. And it's a give and take relationship. So just as bad as the hearer needs to hear the word, the speaker needs to speak it. You see? It's what he must do. So it's a give and take relationship between the speaker and the hearer. Well, that speaker is Christ. You see? It's his word. And 
when you hear his word, you may rebel and run off looking for other words to soothe things that you go through. You understand? You go through things in life and you look for a solution with words. You need to hear something that gives you a solution. It's always going to be Christ, but sometimes you're rebellious and you go to other men and you have sex with them. You understand what I'm saying to you from a pure hearted perspective? You receive into your ear words that are that are not as profitable or pleasurable as Christ's words. But you're just rebellious and you think it may be. Well, that's what the scriptures have been telling you all along, honestly. That's why I will use words like adultery to describe your relationship with him when you listen to other words, other thoughts, and you receive them, thinking they're going to give you the benefit that only he can give you because he's your husband. You see, your true husband is the only one who can pleasure you in an eternal way, satisfied. Now the bottomless pit is soft, just like Christ said. Y'all are laboring and laboring and heavy laden. I'll give you rest for your soul. You're trying to fill your soul with things that are temporary. So I'll give you something that's eternal, which is this word. And you hear it and you receive it into your ear and it causes you to become one with him. Because they become your thoughts, your children. You see? And now you start teaching yourself Christ's thoughts. You're reminding yourself of his thoughts all the time. No longer someone else's. No longer what, it, what it somebody else says will work. <laughs> no longer just some idea that someone has come up with. Nope. All the philosophies fall. All of the ideals fall. All of man's wisdom falls. Eventually. You see? And you come back to your husband. And when you read the prophets, that's what they say in, in so many terms. Like Hosea. Abba told him, get you an adulterous wife, because that's what Israel has done to me. And she went off and played the harlot. <laughs> But eventually came back to him and he redeemed her back. You see, that's Abba with us. And it's our thoughts. That's what he's saying. Your thoughts were, were, you were searching for other men. But there was right thought all along. But you were searching for some other husband. Not hearing your husband. Just like Yahusha said. Your house is left to you desolate. That only happens when your husband leaves. Now does it make sense that Abba said, Hear ye him. Hear what he has to say to you. You see? And be married to Christ. Be one with him. In other words, yoked. That's what married means. That's what Christ said. Take my yoke upon you. Marry me. Because being married to me is easy. It's not hard. It's light. It's nothing for you to carry because I'm self-sufficient and I'm teaching you how to be self-sufficient. You see? And no longer laboring for self-sufficiency because that's temporary. It's a false illusion of self-sufficiency that these people have in the world. It's not, it's not true. And when, and when it falls down, the illusion falls down, then they'll see how vulnerable they truly were all along. This world has a huge false sense of security because they deny the husband. They deny Christ. So they go along with, with uh, some other God, like, like the Father said, some other God that they've come up with, an idol that they give their worship to. This is what would give me life. This sustains me. This takes care of me. It's the word. It's always been the word because in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. So it's the word that you need. And how do we how do we prove that that's the case? Man does not live by bread alone, but by every. Sorry. 
So you've got two stomachs, don't you? One of them has been neglected in your life, and one of them has, has been being filled, and then it empties. Filled, empties. Hold on a second here. <clears throat> Let me listen to what the grandson of right thought is saying. He's saying you have two stomachs, one of which, let's say, you, let's use one, which will be the spiritual stomach. When you feel it, it never empties. Okay? <clears throat> what you saying, grandson? Stack up riches in heaven where there's no moth that will decay it. There's no rust that decays it. No thief. No thieves break through and steal it. So you got a stomach that never empties. Once you fill it, it stays full. But you can never fill it enough. Wait a second. No matter what I put in, that's that's more of it that I need. I never get too full. I'm always full. <laughs> I'm never too full and I'm never empty. I'm never lacking. But my other stomach, my flesh stomach, I feel it. If I feel it too much, oh, that ain't good. I got a stomach ache. So I feel it till it's full. But over time, it starts to get empty. And it cries out for more. So I have to give it more. So the temporary stomach needs temporary things. And temporary things will fade. But the eternal stomach needs eternal things. What's eternal? In the beginning was the word. <clears throat> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. So there you have it, little flock. You need that word that when you put it in that stomach, it's, it fills it and it stays full forever. Now, remember when Christ said, out of your bellies shall flow living rivers of water? Out of your what? Do you see what the grandson of right thought is breaking down for you here in such clarity? Out of your bellies. Which bellies? Your spiritual belly. Because it's filled. And now your cup runneth over and it spills out for others to partake. Like what's happening here. You see what I'm trying to explain to you? If you fill that stomach up with Christ's words, with the words of the Father, then out of your belly will flow living rivers of water because you're filled with something eternal. It's an eternal fountain. It will never fade or go away. You will never forget these words once you have taken them in. Now, how does Christ describe you taking it in? He says, eat my body and drink my blood. He who hath an ear, let him hear. See? That's what you're eating. You're eating what I am. Spiritually, which is thoughts that go into an ear. That's why he says, he who hath ears, or he who hath an ear, let him hear. So now you can receive the spiritual thing into your stomach, through your ear, into your spiritual stomach, because that's how your spirit eats, by hearing it doesn't eat by eating food, by bread alone. Nope, it needs the word. That's what feeds it. And if it doesn't receive the word, then it's empty. It's starving. That's why he said there's going to be a drought of the word of hearing the words. See what I'm trying to say to you? See how the Bible is all interlaced through this message that I'm giving to y'all? That I hope y'all receive soon, Abba willing. Do you hear this? It's the word that you need. It's not something else. It's not anything else. Because in order for your body to do anything, it needs fuel in it. If you don't eat food, 
then your body won't function. So then you can't do anything else. So then what about your spirit? Well, if you don't feed that spirit the food that it needs, then it can't do anything. It can't live. Man shall not live by bread alone. So just like a muscle, if you don't use it, what happens to it? It starts to atrophy. It gets weak. It gets little. It's not being used. Do you see the principle? It's true on one level. It's true on all levels. So this world that you've been living in, they neglect the weightier matters. They focus on those 3D things that tend to the flesh life. And that's why Christ said, this is not my kingdom. It's not of this world. My kingdom is in inner world. I'm working on your inner life because that's where everything else comes from. So there's no need in me working on other things of your life without working on your life. That's silly. It's having a car. The engine is gone. It doesn't run. It won't start. It doesn't run. But it has a flat tire. So you're changing the flat tire. One of the windshield wipers doesn't work. So you're fixing that. The cigarette lighter on the inside stopped working, so you replaced it. There was a crack in the windshield, so you got the windshield replaced. You were tired of the rims that you had on there, so you bought a new set of rims to put on there. Some bigger ones, some even more expensive ones to put on there. You decided, now nah, the transmission... Things might be old, so it might have some issues. Let me get a new one. So you replace the transmission in the car. The exhaust had a leak, so it was making a lot of noise. So you got the exhaust system replaced on the car. Even put some flow masters on there. You said, man, I had a single exhaust. I'm going to make a dual exhaust. I think that looks better. You even went as far as to put some hydraulics on the car. I want that thing to bounce when I'm rolling. Yeah, but you won't be rolling <laughs> unless you get that engine fixed. <clears throat> you won't be able to do nothing unless you get that fixed first. It would be wise if you get the engine replaced first and then change the rims and the windshield wiper and the cigarette lighter. All the cosmetic stuff is unimportant of life. But that's what people pay attention to is cosmetics. Oh, my, my hair, it's starting to turn gray. Oh, God. Panicking and stressing? Can one man, by taking thought, change one hair to gray or white? So then why take thought of it? In other words, why worry? No worrisome thought comes from the Father. So as soon as we start worrying, we need to repent. But people don't think they need to repent from that. They think that's normal. They think it's normal to worry. Okay, read the children of Israel and read that word murmur. And then read Christ. And what he said to those same murmuring tribes of people, he said he was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What did he say to them? Be of good cheer. Fear not. Why didst thou doubt? Have faith. If you have faith, O ye of little faith, if you ask believing, if you say to this mountain, and nothing shall be impossible to you. So then, did you hear that little flock or not? 
Nothing shall be impossible to who? You. That's where the kingdom of heaven is. Who is the king of heaven? Isn't that an interesting answer? Who's the king of heaven? Who would you say is the king of heaven? Now, where is his kingdom? So that means, where is that king? How interesting is that? So then no wonder nothing is impossible to you. Because if his kingdom is inside of you and his throne is in you and he's sitting on that throne, how does he execute his power? Through you. Through you. I know. Not through them. Not through that government. Not through that leader. Not through that officer. Not through that judge. Not through any of that TV. Not through any of that AI technology. Not through any of that. He works through you. It's stunning. It's astounding. As strange as that may be. He said his salvation is strange. That's what he said. They shall see the strangeness of my salvation. So then it's strange. Why is that strange to hear that it's strange if his people are also strange? If they're his people, then they're like him. So that means he's strange. Be ye perfect as your father in heaven is perfect. You are a peculiar people. <laughs> you are a peculiar priesthood. Okay, be perfect like you. You are perfectly peculiar. So, so shall I be then. I shouldn't be trying to be like the world because friendship with the world is enmity against you. I'm not doing what you're telling me to do in there. If I'm listening to them because they lie, they deceive. They want everything to comfort that physical vessel that they're in. You want everything to fill that spiritual belly that I've been telling you about. That's what you hunger and thirst after, so you will be filled. They hunger and thirst after 3D things, so they shall have their reward. Now, what is the end of that reward? It's death, because that's sin to do that. You're neglecting the weightier matters of life. You're neglecting the spiritual things of life. And there's only one side of that being that exists forever. The things that are seen are temporal. Can you see your physical body? Then that means it's temporary. Can you see that internal person that's in there talking? That means that that's the eternal being that you are. The one who should be in there doing the labor, not this 3D guy. He just fulfills what that true man on the inside lab is laboring in, it, in. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Thinking is the labor that the man is doing. He's devising an image that he would like to experience, that 3D man. He would like to experience so the spiritual man is devising an image. If y'all have ears to hear this, then you'll greatly benefit from it. And if you don't, well, then you'll fall into the ditch and be left desolate without this knowledge and be destroyed. Because that's what happens when you lack knowledge. So if you're doing the labor, which is easy, which is formulating the image that you would like to see. Now you're doing the spiritual labor. The spiritual work. Thinking in your heart. So now that you formulated the image, now the feelings feel the feelings that match being in that image. That's the wife. She agrees. Oh, wow, that feels great. Oh, look at this. Let me give you an example just to make it real simple. 
I'm in a cold environment and I don't want to be. I want to be somewhere warm. I'd rather live somewhere tropical. So then I simply go in my mind, put myself in the environment I'd like to be, which would be a, some sand in my toes. I better be moving my toes around right now, feeling that sand all in there, sitting in a chair, leaning back with an umbrella up there, sun beaming down on my skin, feeling ever so good, warming all over me. I'm glistening. I'm healthy. I'm shining. I'm hearing the waves. I can smell the salt in the air from the beach. I can smell the ocean water. I can hear the seagulls doing all that noise that they make. I can look through. I can see the sand and the, the water and the shore coming up and down. I can see the ebb and the flow. I can I can look and see the clouds in the sky and the blue sky. So then, though the flesh man is sitting there shivering his boots off and everything with, with Jack Frost nipping at his nose and all, my spiritual man, which is the true man, is on the beach chilling, drinking a pina colada. <laughs> With, a sh with an umbrella in that damn thing tipped off to the side. <laughs> ah, another, <laughs> another. Ah, yeah. Shaken and not stirred. <laughs> Y'all feel me? That's the feeling that makes me feel like this. Well, see, now that you're thinking and feeling that, then you're, so are you. And if every Israelite understood that, then they'd ignore Egypt. They stop thinking Egypt is their life. That's the temporary life. Okay, your father, he may have had a great job and made a whole lot of money. Okay, what's going to happen in the end? Isn't he going to pass on? What happened to his father and the father before him and the father before him? So their flesh existence was temporary. It was a vapor. So there's no need in giving it a lot of attention. Like Christ said, there's no need in thinking about how you'll eat or drink or what you'll wear or whatever. There's no need in thinking about that. Don't worry about it. But seek ye first the kingdom. Go into that secret place that I just described to you. Seek ye first the kingdom. An image in there, what I just described. Be on the beach, sipping a pina colada, tiddling your toes in the sand. Watching the sea turtle come out, lay some eggs out there. Wow. Seeing the jellyfish trapped on the sand. Uh-oh. You understand what I'm saying? All, and put as much detail as possible because you're there. You're not thinking about being there. You're there. That's why you feel it. Feel the sun hit your skin. F smell it. Because if you don't, then you're not actually there. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Now, how often do you do this? You do this whenever you're dozing off to go to sleep at night. You go right back to the beach. I don't care where you're at physically because that's your false life. That's your temporary life. That illusion will fade to the truth once you put it where it needs to be. So if you put it on the beach, it'll be there. If you put it at work in the morning, it'll be there. And that's what people usually doze off sleeping about the next day. He says, take no thought for tomorrow. So you need to listen to him. So then you stop doing that. Take no thought for tomorrow. Okay. So what, what, where am I right now? Where do I actually want to be? Go there. I don't care where it is. Because nothing shall be impossible. So then put yourself there by faith. I'm here. It doesn't care. I don't care what it physically looks like. That's temporary illusion. But what I can't see which is on the inside place. You can't see me in there imaging that. That's eternal. I can do that all the time, so I may as well do it. Now, all of a sudden, three weeks go by, and I'm sitting on a beach in Dominican Republic or wherever the hell you're at, sitting on a beach, sipping a pina colada, laughing, going, 
I didn't know I was going to get that raise at work. I didn't know I was going to get that bonus that was going to afford me the money to pay these tickets. I didn't know that was going to happen, but it happened because you did it. So that had to happen because as a man thinketh, so in his heart, so is he. It had to happen. Uh, see, see, this, this is what I want you guys to understand here. Do you hear me what I'm saying? It has to happen. The circumstances have to happen. So then what will happen when you wake up? If you went to sleep doing the thing you would like to do, when you wake up, you have an expectation. That's the feeling Abba wants because that's what children have for their parent when they say, am I going to go do such and such, please? Your parents are like, oh, I'll think about it one day. You'll be able to do it. The next day, they're like, can I, come on, is the day the day? All right, man, just give me a few days. We'll do it. The next day, come on, we're doing it. We're doing it. Hey, man, I said we're going to do it. But that anticipation is what you need to have for your thing. Is we doing it today? Am I on the beach today? <sighs> I'm just looking for the signs that lead me right to it. Because I expect them to be there because I'm already there. I'm not here dealing with this drama. I'm not. I'm here. To be spiritually minded is life in peace. So whenever you don't feel life in peace, you know you ain't spiritually minded. Repent. This is true repentance, what I'm describing to you. This is true repentance of the spirit, not of the flesh. Okay, I'm doing this thing in the flesh so I can get right. That's called works. That's called works. You're not justified by that. That doesn't make you clean. Repenting what your thoughts and your feelings make you clean. Because as a man thinks, so is he. Not as a man work with his hands is what he is. No, it's what he thinks and feels. So I'm thinking and feeling I'm on the beach. Well, that's where you are. Because nothing is impossible. I'm thinking and feeling I'm standing on top of Mount Everest saying I did it. Well, if that's your heart's desire, now you are doing it. So it's going to happen. It's going to. So now you realize... All of the nasty, deep, dark thoughts that I've had in my mind that are fleshly thoughts, obviously, because the flesh mind is death. All those death thoughts I've been having is why I'm having a death experience. But if I want a life experience, I have to have a spiritual mind and stay spiritually minded because it's peaceful on that beach with my feet in the sand. It's not peaceful at that job every day with all that commotion and people stressing and mad and the boss talking shit and driving up on his cart with a coffee in his damn hand talking about why were you here six minutes late? Because I woke up too late today. That's why I'm, I was tired as hell. I fell asleep holding my baby. My wife had to take my baby away because I was in the chair sleep holding the baby because I was so exhausted from my day of work yesterday. I went to sleep. I woke up. I had to take a shower and get dressed and shit. So I woke up a few minutes late because I was still slobbing, sleeping because I was tired as hell. I had to drive two hours home as well as work. Traffic wore me the hell out even more. Fleshly mind is death, but spiritual mind, I'm on the beach chilling. Then you, then you do go to work. While you're waiting for that to happen, you do go to work. People notice your attitude is different. See? Why do you feel like this? Because it's a sunny day on the beach, man. <laughs> That's why. With a cold pina colada in my hand or whatever it is, drink that you're drinking. <laughs> Shoot. That's what I'm doing. That's why I feel so good. And then they laugh at you and laugh at you and call you a fool. But you're a fool for Christ. You're a fool for right thought. That's thinking right. Then when you are there, then people are sitting there going, wow, that guy did say he was going to. He didn't say he was going to. He said he was. Now he is. Very simple, little flock. So y'all, that's all you got to do is stay spiritually minded in life. Search your heart for the true desires and, and then ask for them. And how do you ask? Show Abba that image and feel it when you show it to him. Like your child does. They draw a little picture with them standing there holding your hand and the whole family's there. Even the dog was in the picture that they drew. <laughs> you couldn't tell it was him at first, but he's there too. They even put a little fish in the fishing, I mean, there's a little bowl there. <sighs> and the sun is up there shining all the time in the kid's picture. There's a sun shining and it's blue up there. It's a beautiful day and it's just them and their family and there's a house. Why do children draw that same picture? It doesn't matter what race of child this is. You see, you, you see them drawing and that's what they draw. They draw their family, a house with a sun shining, with a smile on his face shining over them. 
And that's what they draw that make them happy. And they run to you. Look, that's the desire of your heart. That was all our desire was to ha have a family. A real family. With a dad that comes in there. Hey, son, the daughter grabs you, tosses you up in the air, catches you and squeezes you and loves and loves all over you and kisses all over you. and says, I love you, my baby. How you doing today? I missed you. I've been thinking about you all day. How what you been up to? To have that. Your mother. Ah, I'm on my knee. Oh, baby, come here. I got you. Let me see. Mm, let's make it better. Let's rub it. Let's blow on it. Is that better? It hurt. Oh, my baby got hurt. That's all we needed. That's all we needed. You and your brother go to the basketball court. You throwing up bricks. Your brother. Bro, show me how to do that, man, so we can both be sweet. We can be them brothers that's cold. Let's do it. See? All right. Iron sharp as iron. Let's do it. I'm going to show you my technique. You show me what you know. That's how this goes. But for some reason, people deny that that's what they want. And so when they grow up, they get married. They tear their own house down. What does it say about a foolish woman? It says a wise woman builds her house, but a foolish woman tears her house down with her own hands. So it's you. It's no one else responsibility today to either live in life in peace or live in death. It's your choice. Choose this day who you serve, the spirit or the flesh. Then the only two choices you got. Silawan, Mr. Layla.